Is the world finally ending or is it just a Microsoft glitch? Have rental prices affected fertility? And is WA's rental reform gonna be followed by the rest of the country? Catch today's episode of The Finance Show with Joe. Welcome to The Finance Show with Joe. He's Joe, I'm just some schmo. We're gonna be talking about CrowdStrike, fertility rates, and rental reform. But first, obviously, CrowdStrike. So I walked into Coles and I thought, like it was Terminator 2. <laughs> I uploaded, Judgment day. I uploaded a photo on my Instagram and I literally, it, it, I couldn't believe it. I walked into Coles and I saw a poster drawn in crayon. Like they didn't even have like nice crayon. It was crayon that said cash only. And you weren't even buying a bon me or anything. No, no. <laughs> that's, a, that's the only time I ever see cash only. I wasn't in Cabramatta. <laughs> I wasn't at my barber. I was at Coles. And I never have cash on me. Neither. My job as a mortgage broker, okay, we get paid digitally by the banks. Money yeah. goes straight into our account. I don't see cash. No, neither. But just by chance, I had a few hundred dollars at home, okay, <laughs> in cash from birthday presents earlier in the year. And they were stashed away in cards. All right. And I was like, okay, I'll open this. And I had a like I had to drive back home. I was surprised they weren't on stuff under your mattress or something. <laughs> I'm not that Lebanese. I'm Lebanese, but I'm not that Lebanese. But I literally had to go home and I had to open up my cards and take cash out to be able to go back to Coles and pay for my groceries. In 2024 was not something I would imagine. Would ever happen. No, but it does does sort of expose that um, the weaknesses of digital finance, doesn't it? It definitely does. So the story is Microsoft was having an update. No, okay. It actually had nothing to do with Microsoft. Okay. Nothing to do with my, Microsoft. It's all CrowdStrike. Mm -hmm. So CrowdStrike, that's basically like uh, cyber protection, basically. Okay. They released an update for their own software that crashed 8.5 million computers around the world. It was a bad update. Yeah. They noticed it quickly. But then to fix it, you need to do it manually. Obviously, it's going to be a bit difficult when there's 8.5 million computers around the world. Yeah. <laughs> so they had to, you know, talk to everyone's IT person. The 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 part to us that we really saw affected because we work in banking, NAB was down. CBA was down. The big four, yeah. Macquarie Bank. Okay. It was outside mm. of the big four. It was a lot of the major lenders. And then it was like the second and third tier lenders that people don't like that were still able to work. So we're using CrowdStrike. Guys, maybe sometimes using the majors isn't a good idea like we <laughs> recommend. I don't know. I'm just going to put that one out there. It was funny as well. A little, little Easter egg. I was watching um, Formula One Grand Prix and the Mercedes team used CrowdStrike. So their computers were down as well. You could see it on the pit wall. They just had blue screens. What, during test? Yeah, I think it was during practice on the Friday, yeah. And they couldn't? Well, I mean, they were running, the car could run. They just like the screens and stuff, like their data wasn't but like, working. But like the data is like 90% of the- Well, yeah, their practice sessions, I don't think were very useful. <laughs> oh my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> just to divert from that, I, I wish we could talk about Formula One for an hour, but we can't. <laughs> just to divert from that, this does raise a massive question uh, about digital banking. Yeah, and just security and safety. Like you can't access your own money yeah. when- if the banks, if, if something like this happens. Yeah. This is unprecedented. This has never happened before not, uh, on this scale. Yeah. And we've seen a lot of news reports in the last 12 months. Mm. ANZ moving to cashless, Macquarie Bank moving mm. to cashless. Um, you know, a lot of these major banks, they want to move to cashless so that they could track money better. The ATO can track money better and they can essentially make sure that people are paying their taxes on time. Also, they can put their fingers in every single pie and then also sell your data. <laughs> well, that too. And then another big thing is the merchant charges. Mm. So when you go to an ATM or you go to, not not so much an ATM, but when you're buying from, I want to say the bakery down the road mm. and it's under 10 bucks, they have to pay a fee in order to be able to have that transaction go through. It's like 12 cents. So it's like 0.12%. Yeah, I think it's, it's around about 10 cents. And then so what that essentially means is if we move to digital banking mainly, Whoever owns the terminal, okay, whether it be Stripe, whether it be uh, CBA, whether mm. it be NAB, whoever owns that actual FPOS terminal is making an extra 12 cents on every single transaction. Every purchase. Which is the reason why they want to move to digital banking. But we saw the effect. One update can crash an entire system. And CrowdStrike's been around for a while. It's not like they're not a respected uh, software company. Yeah. And Although their reputation has certainly taken a massive hit now. Huge. If I see CrowdStrike somewhere, I, I, I never knew what CrowdStrike was. That's the thing. It was, you, you, we didn't even realize how a part of the world CrowdStrike was yeah. and just in their software and where it was because it was protecting against cyber attacks. That's why airports and stuff use it. And it became infamous very quickly. 
Sydney Airport was shut down. Yeah, Melbourne as well. There were delays in flights. There were delays in uh, trains, I'm certain as well. But one other issue we found was settlements. For a transfer of title to occur, there needs to be a PEXA workspace. So a title, when you buy a property, you buy the title deed that Mm. says, I own this, which means I own that land. What we saw occur was at 3 p.m., settlements weren't going through. Thankfully, I had two settlements on Friday, one at 12.30 and one at 2. After 3 p.m., people weren't able to actually get their property and grab the keys. And you were having conveyances on the seller's side saying, why are you delaying settlement? You were supposed to come in. And they're like, we're not delaying anything. We've got the funds. We can transfer it. And then the blue screen of death would pop up. Yeah. So we saw banking not only get affected on the, oh, I can't pay FPOS side, Mm. but we also saw them get affected on the mortgage side. I didn't even know about the institutional banking or the corporate level of of finance, you know, with the big transactions. Yeah. But for that to happen at the low retail level with the mum and dads and, you know, people trying to buy their first home. Just normal people, yeah. Just normal people. It's a massive effect. And it does raise the question, should we move to a cashless society? Well, clearly not. And I'm more, I used to be against it. I like cash. I'm Lebanese at the end of the day. <laughs> okay. I don't use it that often, but I understand its purpose. I understand. Yeah, 100%. I have a friend. Uh, he's a great guy. His name is Dimi. God bless him. Love him with all my heart. Dimi goes to the ATM every single week and he will withdraw $250. Mm. Okay. Outside of his salary. Mm-hmm. That's $250 he puts in his wallet. And that is his coffee money. That is his spending money. That is, I'm going to 7 Eleven and I'm buying lunch money. That is, that is his. It's money. really good way to budget. He's, he's a tradie. Yeah. It's a fantastic way to budget because he knows at the end of the week, if he has spent too much money, he now knows, okay, I've spent too much. These are the locations I could go for lunch. I could go to the local bakery and I could grab myself a sausage roll <laughs> and a coffee and that's going to cost me eight bucks. That's going to keep me full for the whole day. Mm-hmm. I can go to the Vietnamese bakery. We mentioned it earlier yeah. and I could grab myself a banh mi for like 10 bucks. Yeah. Okay. And you'll be full. And you'll be full. And they're fantastic sandwiches. Oh, so I've good. said it time and time again, food tours, cabramata, got to go. <laughs> I'm now starting to think to myself, this cashless society isn't a good idea. No, it's, it's definitely not. It's, it's like 99% not a good idea anymore. I th- I, th- I was against it before mostly because you don't have control over your own money. Even like really rich people, they money doesn't exist anymore. Mm. You know, Like they have these huge amounts, but you they don't have those amounts. Yeah. It's not like they have like a Scrooge McDuck vault that they dive into. That's exactly right. I just kept thinking Terminator 2, Die yeah. Hard 4, all the great movies. And I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, Skynet is here. I mean, it's been around for a bit. Like, you know, all the little pods and stuff that listen to, I mean, our phones listen to us. You know, you always get that ad. You're like, how did they know that I was looking to buy this yeah. when I was talking about this? Because they listen. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think we should move to a cashless society or should we actually be moving to more of a cash society? We see Japan function quite well and they're 99% cash uh i don't know about like that that high but yeah it's mostly cash they're mainly a cash society and they're considered one of the most advanced societies in the world yeah look it it gives you more control i think it's fine to like just have it split down the middle because there is a convenience in having it digital yeah um it just can't be the only thing we have but we need to move on to our next topic yeah this is a serious topic which was a pretty damning article that came out this year it was da- it's a damning report like from the abs and stuff like that and so the fertility rate has dropped in major capital cities as people have to decide between rent and having a kid it's not even just rent it's even just it's even just uh, mortgages and stuff just everything cost of living and, and interest rates like I've even had this conversation myself. I'm having it with my wife. Yeah. My wife is a doctor. I'm a mortgage broker that owns my own business. Mm. And we are having the conversation of, can we afford to have a child? Yeah. and Because not only that, like you both have to work because that's just how it is nowadays. Yeah. Um, so then you got you to pay for childcare at some point, which is someone's salary mm-hmm. every year. And yeah. all you're doing is working to pay for that childcare. And then plus all the additional costs. Yeah. Diapers aren't cheap. Uh, baby formula is extremely expensive. Clothes that, that they grow out of and then you have to buy more. <laughs> there's a whole bunch of things. And one of the major things that came out of this, I think it was a KPMG report. The closer you were to a CBD, the less likely you were yeah. to have a child. Yeah. They noticed in Melbourne, Melbourne CBD itself, I think it dropped by 0.3%. There was something about 03 in there. But if you went to the regional CBD, which mm. was Geelong, you were more likely to have kids. Yeah. And that is such a major impact. The central business districts are where people are expected to go and make money. It's where people are expected mm. to 
be able to uh, it's like, produce. It's like the old timey market. It's where you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm taking the potatoes out to market today. <laughs> okay, I wasn't expecting to get that, but um, <laughs> I don't know why it was Irish either. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ, I don't know where your brain went. Uh, but like, it's it's 100 percent true. I have clients from Wollongong. Yeah. Okay, that will have three kids. I'll have clients in Sydney that are like, I have one child. And that's it. <laughs> and that's it. And no, we're not considering having a second. We're seeing a lot of single and mm. we're seeing one or two child households. We're not yeah. seeing the three, four kids anymore. No. Um, Who can afford that? It, it's just Lebanese people that get paid in cash. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but that's another story for another time. But, um, but we're seeing like it's such a significant thing. And the government, th- this actually brings up a whole other point to me, which we've spoken about before, but the government mm. is letting in a mass amount of migrants to compensate for our low fertility rates. So let, let, let's put this in numbers. So the fertility rate in order to sustain a population and continuously grow at a reasonable rate is at 2.1. 2.1. Every couple needs to have at least 2.1 kids. Okay. <laughs> this decimal is yeah. named Frank. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You've got two and a half kids and a dog. Yeah. <laughs> um, where it's currently at is... nationally, but we're heading towards a trend that is going to be 1.45, which means our population will continuously decline. We do not have enough babies to replace. You, like, it takes two people to make one person. Yep. That's not going to replace you. That's going to affect jobs in the future. It's going to affect, uh, yeah, like the availability of of labor in general. Skilled or not skilled, doesn't matter. Yep. Um, Japan's facing this issue. Japan's facing this issue. China has faced this issue in the past, but I think they're pretty sweet now with over their, their one point. They're gonna they, they're gonna have an issue with the uh, after their one child thing because once they get into the well, like once they're working and then they're like the main demographic, mm. there's not going to be enough of them. It doesn't matter now because they're replenishing those numbers. But basically, the one child thing, I think they admitted. Them. Yeah, it was a mistake. Yeah, two point one down to one point four five. The the huge issue with this is aging population. Yeah which we all study at school, Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of retirees, current retirees, depend on the pension, which is government funded. Yeah. They didn't bring in superannuation until 22 years ago. You would, I was like four. (laughs) Forget how old I am sometimes. Um, But I'm, I think superannuation was a compulsory thing around 2001. Okay. um, Where people, where employers were forced to pay for their employees' retirement um, or help them build their retirement fund. So somebody would get their salary and mm. then 11% of that would go to the retirement fund and then the retirement fund would take that money and grow it at 10 or 11% depending on what it is. And by the time you retire, you'll have, you know, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars mm-hmm. $400,000. But there's a massive gap. I'm, yet again, I'm in the mortgage market. I've said it time and time again. We have these 40 to 50-year-olds that don't have that much super- superannuation. And, and, and this is when the, the renting stuff comes into play. Exactly. And where does the pension come from? The pension comes from taxes. Yeah. We just had a tax cut. We just had a tax cut. Now, whilst this is more <laughs> money in our back pockets, mm. which is all well and good, depending on who you ask, because we all know my opinion on this right now, okay? Mm. It's going to increase inflation. Interest rates are going to go up again, yada, yada, yada. But what is going to end up happening is – Either taxes are going to increase or we're going to have another high level of migration. Well, it's going to be the migration thing because it's, it's more of a population thing. And this is something that isn't um, – it's not exclusive to Australia. This is happening in Western Western nations across the board or developed nations, I should say, because mm-hmm. um, it's, it's not limited to the West. Yeah. Um, developed nations in general, um, basically at this point, every, both parents are working. Both parents are under greater financial stress as things get more and more expensive. And they have to work more and more and, and this, that, and the other that there's just no time to have a kid. So what do we think is going to be fair and a solution? Because right now communism looks great to me. (laughs) (laughs) Smidgen of communism here and there, socialism, just a smidge. I'm not talking full socialist party. I don't want to be Argentina or Venezuela. Well, Argentina's gone full libertarian with it. That's that's what they're experimenting with because they had a socialist government for the last – I'm not big into Argentina, so I don't really know. Um, but I know I did know they had like a socialist leaning government before this, so they went full libertarian, which is basically complete deregulation of everything. The government's not doing anything for you except like run the basic economy and, yeah. and structure of things. We'll see how it plays out. I have no idea. It's not happened. There's never been a libertarian government before, which is another insane thing. But mm. um, you know, um, I don't want to get into Argentina. This is a finance yeah. show with Joe. We're based in <laughs> Illawong. Uh, <laughs> but I, I definitely think. 
And I think we're already seeing this happen sort of across the board again. People are angry yeah. in, in general over the quality of their lives is decreasing and everyone's starting to notice. Mm. And it doesn't, it's not just poor people. <laughs> it is now the middle class, which is continually shrinking. I think we now need to seriously look at the way Australia is built now more than ever. We've mm. been talking on this show for the last three to four months. Doom, there's been a lot of doom and gloom. This is a serious doom, okay? Like mm. re- fertility rates dropping by 0.7%. That means 70 our country is basically being replenished by 70% less than what it was previously. Yeah. Essentially. It, it, this isn't the first time it's happened. This happened in the 70s as well, but the 70s also weren't a good time for the economy. It was also a recession for, mm. for developed nations as well. Yep. Oil crisis and stuff like that. So it just, it maybe, you know, maybe we're being a little too reactionary right now because things are a bit rough in the post-COVID sort of stuff. We're sort of figuring things out as, mm. a, as economies trying to keep growing, but the way they're growing is by like bleeding their people. <laughs> and I just, I think we need, yet again, government reform. I think there needs to be less regulation. And I mm. think there needs to be crosses and checks around what the government is spending money on. Well, yeah, that's part of that corruption watchdog that they talked about earlier. Yeah, yeah I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm all in on the corruption watchdog. Oh, I mean, I, I think the only people that aren't in on it are the ones in parliament. That's it. I don't think. I think pretty sure it's a bipartisan. Like, I don't know anyone that's like, yeah, no, the government should be able to do whatever the hell they want. Yeah, no, no one can. No one should tell them what to do. Should I run for office? <laughs> I don't know, man. Give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a red hot go. I would hate to work in politics personally. Like that's no, not for me. I just think to myself, if I was in, and the way that I would say it is number the first thing I would be doing. I think Julie. I think uh, the Romans said it best, and the only reason why I know this is because of the movie The Dark Knight. <laughs> okay. Where when you're bringing in politicians, you should be bringing them in kicking and screaming, not because oh, they yeah. want to be politicians, but because they are the smartest people to do so. It's, yeah, it, it really depends on the person too, because there is the, there is the idea of like the reluctant king, yeah. whereas the person who doesn't want to, re- want to rule is the one who should be ruling. Mm. But there's a reverse to that, whereas the guy who doesn't want to rule really doesn't want to rule and doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. then things just sort of fall apart. Yeah. So it's not, it's not perfect, but the idea... Anyone who goes into politics has, has already got a good opinion of themselves, so to speak, and yeah. they have a, a fascination with the idea of power because you've got to put up with a lot of stuff and you've got to have a lot of drive to do this. You don't just sort of, I mean, if you've got to know a lot of money, yeah, you can just fall into it. Yeah. <laughs> but generally speaking, why do people want to be politicians? That's, what, that's the question I ask. Is it because they want to help people? No. I'm sure some of no. them do, no. but no, no, it's not. No. I don't think not it's the majority. Them, not a single one of them wants to help anyone. <laughs> no, I'm sure there's some idealists that, that exist that are out there. <laughs> I just don't. I don't think it's the majority. I think most people are after money and power. <laughs> they start as the idealist, and by the time they're in a good position, it's money and power. Yeah, we see examples of that constantly. But anyway, this is a finance show. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hammer them. No, but um, I just, I genuinely think we, and I've, I've said it time and time again, mm. um, we're going to see so much more bankruptcy in the next six months. Yeah, I mean, people are just going to keep doing it harder and harder. People are going to do harder. We're going to have a lower fertility rate. We're going to have more migration and you're going to have a lot more senior people, NIMBYs being like, not in my backyard, Mm. but it's going to be too late by then. I think, yeah, honestly, the local councils kind of just need to get some balls and and piss off their electorate. I know that's not what you're supposed to do as a politician because you're supposed to represent them. Yeah, we've got uh, one more story that we need to cover. Mm. And we do hope that we actually see this across all yeah. Australian states. But Western Australia has brought in their rental reform, Yeah, which is? So, okay, so basically you get a little, you get a bit more like basic human rights <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> as a former renter. So basically with those rent rises that, that happened all across nationwide, you can now in WA, you can only raise your rent once every 12 months, which rent- is which is pretty reasonable, I feel. Because so, yeah, the market does change. Rents do need to go up. There is a symbiotic relationship between landlord and renter. So landlords can only increase rent by every 12 months. Yeah. Pets are mostly allowed. Pets are mostly allowed. Obviously there's like, they keep saying like reasonable conditions and within reason. So basically it seems like it's, they can't stop you from having pets unless they have a good reason to not let you have a pet. Hmm. Which for a lot of people is a big deal. Um, I know we, like when I was looking for rental properties, we had to cross off a few things because they were like, yes, you can have pets, but it's going to cost you an extra 30 bucks a week or something. Or straight up, no, you can't have a pet. Yeah, which is fair. Look, it's at the end of the day, it's the landlord's place. 
you could, you could, I reckon it's reasonable to come up with like some sort of deal, like yeah. some sort of negotiation. Because yeah, your dog, you know, might be great and really well trained, but you're not going to live there forever. Mm. The next person's dog might chew up the walls, might tear up the carpet or, or destroy doors and stuff like that because it's poorly trained. You don't know that. Yeah. Hence, you talk, you negotiate. Funny you mentioned that. We bought a second golden retriever on the basis that our first one was so good. And she, like the second one is so bad. Um, <laughs> she's more disciplined when we're around. But um, when we're not around, she is so much more naughty. Cheeky. Yeah. She, no, it's not cheeky. She's eaten my couch. Her poo <laughs> was full of leather. She's destroyed all the landscaping. She has, she has literally destroyed my house. She has decreased the value by God knows how much. There's hair everywhere because now she's finally getting rid of her su summer coat. Oh, sorry, her puppy coat and the adult coat is coming in. I completely forgot how hard golden retrievers could be. And now that I've got two of them, yeah. she revs him up. He's <laughs> old. He's like, I want to sleep, but she revs him up and she gets the puppy energy right out of him again. <laughs> So now imagine that, and it's not even your dog. Uh, no, no, no not, not even my dog, not even my house. Yeah, well, yeah. Not, not your house. <laughs> well, like, exactly. Yeah. But like, from a landlord's perspective, yeah. like, you put up with that stuff because your dog, you love that dog. Yeah. Now it's a landlord with, you don't know, you don't really know your tenants, you don't know this dog. All you know is the dog's ruined a lot of shit. Yeah, that's exactly right. And then the last thing is to segue away from yeah. golden retrievers, <laughs> uh, that we can now make minor modifications in rental properties. Yeah. Which, yeah. You've got, had a past experience with, you discussed it on last episode. Yeah, it's just like, so basically you can now, again, with your landlord's permission, because it is their property at the end of the day, put up pictures on your wall, you can put up fly screens, you can put in that um, well, water saving shower heads and, and stuff like that, yeah. which don't know why a renter would do it considering they don't pay the water bill. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm seeing is WA do, and I, I can't believe it because their housing market has been booming. We talked mm. about it last episode. They, they're still the highest growing state right now. Mm. Um, at 1.8 percent but what they're doing is they're actually forcing investors out of the market they're pushing mm. investors out because they're like nope you can't increase rent every six months it has to be every 12 yeah you want to have a rental property fantastic pets have to be allowed mm. like you, okay we want within reason within reason you have to allow somebody to have their pet dog if it's a well-behaved dog Look, at the end of the day, these are normal, like these are people who want to live there. Like it's an investment to the investor, but mm. it's a home for the people who live there. Yeah. Uh, I think <laughs> Manny mentioned it on our last episode with him and he was talking about WA really wants the owner occupied people to come in. Yeah. And good on them. They, we've seen it. I've said it time and time again. WA is investing in their city. They're investing in sport. They're investing in um, uh, local entertainment. They're investing in property. Mm. They want to see it grow. And it is growing. Yeah, and it, it's in working. a good way. Yeah, in a good way. It doesn't seem it. It, it, it seems like they've got some long term thinking going on. Mm. They're not. It's not. It doesn't seem like short term profits are, are the topest, topmost of mind. You know. Yeah, they've got their eye on the target of we want to be Australia's. I don't want to say most prominent city. It's always going to be Sydney and Melbourne. Oh um, yeah, it's, it's too it's, much history. There's too much history there, but they've got such a massive advantage being on the same time zone as Perth. Uh, not Perth as China. China because it's such a lower end of the market. Mm. We are seeing the migration happen. And yeah. it'll probably call off investors and allow more people to migrate there. It'll allow more people to purchase own occupants. Which is what they want. They don't you don't want like um those empty apartment buildings yeah. for investors. No, no one, one no one lives in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like no one wants if no one wants to live there, what's the point? Yeah. You've you've invested all this money and now you've just got empty buildings that accumulate wealth, I guess. Yeah. But if no one is buying them or no one's interested in even being in and around the area, yeah. then then no, you're not gonna accumulate wealth. So Here's some question I want to ask you, and you can drop a comment below. Mm. Do we think that other states will follow? Um, depends on how much public pressure there is because recently there's been a lot of public pressure from renters um, after those uh, uh, post-COVID basically, just how everything sucks. Like yeah. they, they pay ridiculous amounts of money, but they get nothing from their landlords. Yeah. Again, not every landlord. There are many decent people who are landlords, but there are also many who are not. <laughs> I've got a client recently who purchased an investment in Queensland in 22. And I, I, I will never forget this phone call because she was the first person that has said it to me in six months. And mm. I've got a lot of clients. I've mm. got a lot of people I work with day to day. I asked her, oh, how much rent? We have to do a fact finder. So mm. I go, how much rental income are you collecting on this property? Mm. And she goes, well, it should be 600, but I've got it at 480 because I don't want to be a C-U-N-T yeah. to my tenant. Yeah, because there's, there's, there's the economic reasons for doing things and- 
then there's a the social reason. Yeah. And that was the first time in six months I had heard that comment. And God bless her. I can't, oh, damn it, I said her. I'm not going to mention names, but God bless her because mm. she is probably the only landlord I can think of that thought that everyone else is thinking, I'm going to make mortgage repayments, I'm going to make electricity, and I should have more money in my back pocket, which isn't a bad thing way to think. Like at the end of the day, you've got one life to live. You want to make sure that you live it in a comfortable way. But yeah. when you have landlords like that, they're very far and few in between. Yeah. Seeing WA go to this reform is forcing people to be those kinds of landlords. Well, it's just forcing people not to be exploitative because yeah. right now there's just not that many protections for renters in, in New South Wales. When you have BlackRock, one of the largest investment firms in the world, yeah. going to local auctions to buy houses, okay, and they're bidding against mum and dads with families – these sorts of laws need to come into play. This is what I mean. Yeah, there, there's a limit. Like, you know, where everyone's all about, we're all about making money, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. It's the finance show, after all. Yeah. But there is a way to do these things, shall we say, ethically. Can, <laughs> this, that, that's such a big thing to say. You can make money ethically yeah. if the government puts in the right rules and regulations for you to do so. Yeah, and and the, you know, so we we made this argument that. Maybe they have done that and yeah. that's part of the regulation which is stopping dwellings from going up. I don't think that's true. I think that's building regulations, yeah. not not like rental regulations. Yeah. Um, not 100% on the building stuff. But at least with the rent stuff, like anytime you want to take anything up or something's gone wrong, you have to go to um, the ombudsman. Mm. There's no just law, like simple law. Um, I know a lot of people that were getting those rent rises and – they were like, yeah, but we've been asking for these repairs for two years at this point. And you still haven't repaired these rentals. Where's like, why should I pay you more when you yeah. can't? You won't even fix this. Mm. I live here. This is my home, but I'm not allowed to fix it. Yeah. So yeah, just things that there are things that make sense economically, and there are things that make sense in practice. Yeah. Sometimes what works on paper doesn't work in practice, which is you know, with communism, like on great on paper, like it makes it makes a complete logical sense, but it doesn't. It clearly doesn't work out. Because the human condition, you come up with many things. And this is the philosophy show with Michael. <laughs> <laughs> but I agree with everything that you're saying. Um, I, I like the, I like the rental reform mm. as someone that's an advocate for people to buy their first homes, for people to be able to accumulate wealth, for people to be able to build themselves up. Mm. I would rather that happen in a sound, economic, ethical way that is fair, yeah. where if you are working harder to make more money. You deserve it. I don't like the BlackRock coming in and buying properties and hiking up the rent. It was like that medicine that happened in the States where- Oh, that Martin Shkreli guy. Yeah, that yeah. he went and he bought this medicine and he hiked up the price by 2,000% or something. Yeah, I think it was like HIV medicine or something. It was, no, it was diabetes. Diabetes, was fuck, di so that's even worse, yeah, more was, people. So many people have diabetes. They hiked up- Especially the, in America. Yeah, <laughs> they hiked up the medicine prices so high. And then they finally came in and said, no, nobody's allowed to do this, yada, yada, yada. Mm. I like WA. I like the fact that they're doing this. They're building an owner-occupied society where people take care of their properties. And I hope that we could see the same in New South Wales, Victoria, Adelaide. The reason why I hope it so, uh, hope so much is because you won't have people mm. outbidding each other by $250,000, $300,000, creating these inflationary prices. Yeah. At the same time, and I'm going to finish on this note, I want to see the government allowing more builders to enter the market with less regulation to be able to build more dwellings so people can afford to live in New South Wales again. Yeah. A build, just building on that to close off. Victoria, I think, is on that track. 100%. I, they got their, all their prices are going down, their growth is going down, and their rent is going down, yep. and investors are becoming less interested, which is great for the people that actually live there. That is exactly right. So let us know what you think about WA's rental reforms, and let's finish off on that. My name yeah. is Joe. That is definitely some schmo. Don't listen to a word I say. <laughs> <laughs> and if you need any help with your finance, visit us at www.itsimple.com.au. Almost forgot my own website there. You can also reach out to us on Instagram and LinkedIn. And we hope you've enjoyed this episode. Mm -hmm.